All right, we're going to do a little uh, update video here uh, on Snap-on. It's not Snap-on, it's on torque wrenches, but we're using Snap-on product. And uh, there's been a lot of controversy on this. And as a matter of fact, a lot of people are being ridiculously rude. It, it's just information, and I want to I want to do something that other people aren't doing. So I'm going to show you how we got to that information. Because some of you really like this channel, and you like what's being presented here, and you're positive about it. Some of you are really helpful when information's incorrect. But just to come on here and blurt out a bunch of stuff and not show, you know, well, this is why I know this or something, we're going to just go ahead and, and demonstrate why it is that we talk about hand placement when using torque wrenches uh, and how that affects your applied torque. So first off, one state that how we got this information is through some uh, snap-on training materials. That's what we do at the college here is we get, you know, right from the source what is so important about that. And so in this particular... Uh, uh, series here we've got some videos from snap-on this is direct training here and one of the things they talk about is uh, on this day four of this training is it talks about um, review the various wrenches used in your assemblies for grip position requirement and they make a big deal about the fact of where you place your grip is going to affect uh, the applied torque so I'm not an engineer I could follow directions pretty well and I know that from using torque wrenches for a long time there's there's a right way and a wrong way to do that so what I'm going to show you here is I have a brand new in the box snap on torque wrench I'm going to go ahead and pull this baby out and there's also something in here I've got an open set of instructions here and when you get your new uh, wrench one of the first things they tell you to do if you actually read through this, is they tell you to go in here and go through a procedure where you set it to half its value and then torque it multiple times to preload the wrench. So if you're taking it brand new out of the box and going right to use, you're skipping a step. So I'm going to use this as a checklist and, and show you how we would go about that. Okay. So for this particular one here, we've got this tester here. Why don't I go ahead and zoom in on that? So you can see here, I can pick my type of wrench. I want to do a click style. I'm going to do a quick check. And I can change what I want it to read. So I'm going to do 35 foot pounds. I could do uh, different units as well. Hit next. I could double check. I could put in the serial number of the wrench if I wanted to. Operator. We're just going to play around here. So here we are. Take my wrench and set that at 35. Place it on here. Watch here. 35.11. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to go into a shorter spot here and, and see what happens to the, the gauge here. Look at as I put it in the wrong place, according to where the manual says to put it in the center of the handle, you can see how it changed. Now I'm going to go back here just to the very end and see what happens. Not too bad, was it? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take... Effectively, I'm going to change the length of this wrench again. Okay, you can see by adding length to it, we reduce that. Let me zoom in there. You can see what happened. Well, let's talk about this. What do these results tell us? What we saw is we moved our hand closer away from the center of that grip. The number went up. Probably unlikely that most people are going to do that. Wouldn't you agree? What we noticed as we moved it back further, or even put the big extension on there, our number got less. It was pretty hard to screw up, according to just this one wrench on this one day, that if we were somewhat grabbing the handle, we were going to get uh, an accurate torque. But, you know, I'm just sitting here and I'm thinking about some of the stuff you guys are putting on there where you're just, you're, you're being ridiculous. This channel is meant to help people. And to come on here and just throw a bunch of stuff at here saying, you know, a bunch of monkeys don't know what they're doing or this or that. We take a lot of pride. I take a lot of pride, I'll say that, in trying to get accurate information out there. If you viewers, if you ever see something that's not right or inaccurate, make a comment like, hey, you should relook at this, or hey, uh, I'm an engineer and I know this not to be true or whatnot. But this is how we come up with this. It's pretty hard to beat the data on the fact of what happens. The other thing is I don't have time or really a desire to take every single brand of tool and put it on here and try to show whether it's Craftsman, Mac, Snap-on, or whatnot, what those number differences are. I'm in the position, I'm trying to teach people how to do things like read the manual, know your procedures, see what's going on. 
I'm just trying to put information out there that's been passed on to me, gifted on to me, that I believe is accurate. I have you know, training and sources to back up that information. Due to this uh, video, it really made me question, boy, when's the last time I went through and actually did this? And uh, I thought, you know, there's no better thing than just to do it again and prove the results. And I took it a step further. I went to the internet and typed in, you know, numerous different searches, how to use a torque wrench, different manuals. You know what the common consistency is? On all of those manuals, what they say is place your hand in the center of the hand grip, not just for safety so it doesn't slip off. Some of those manuals are very specific to say that extensions used, they even go to the extent of saying putting pipes on there will alter the torque being applied, could also damage the tool, and so on and so on. Man, number one, uh, be positive. Keep, keep wrenching, keep teaching, keep passing on the information you know. Uh, and number two, really ask yourself, how do I know something? How is that to be true? I, I, I think some of the comments on there sound like they might be people that are pretty smart. And sometimes you really smart people, you're jerks. Yeah, I will definitely say that. I just want to say in summary to this that, uh, you know, here in the, in the training lab and, and a lot of things I do on my own, I, I have a lot of fun with this. I mean, this is a way where you take information that's given to you and you actually are able to test it, not even go right into work, but you're able to test things and see what that looks like. Um, I just want to say to all the people who support the channel and uh, uh, the positive comments and also the, also the helpful comments. Sometimes when information needs to be adjusted or tweaked or whatnot, I'm very grateful for you people on there that are part of this network. Um, all the negative uh, stuff that's out there, the people that are just being uh, rude or hurtful uh, for, for no reason to uh, help, um, please just find a different channel. Go, go somewhere else. Go find that community that welcomes that because this one doesn't. This one's all about helping each other. This is a free service uh, out there. It's a great opportunity for people to find out about this college and where they could come get uh, hands-on training. And I just want to say as a passionate person from the motorcycle industry, um, keep riding, keep wrenching, and make it a great day. If you like what you see here, would you please share it? I'd love you to keep my platform going here on uh, technical education and uh, um, the ways to be great in your craftsmanship. So keep on wrenching, and we'll see you again in the future. Thanks for being a subscriber and follower of the channel.